Uh, welcome everyone tuning into this episode of Under the Hood. Uh, my name is Mel and um, I am joined today by Lockie. Um, so Lockie, introduce yourself. Thanks Mel. That was a nice wave. Do you want to do that again? No, I'm not going to wave. Nice, nice I'm not gonna wave. wave. I realize there's probably no need to wave in the first place to an audience who <laughs> is going to introduce to me. Uh, so my name's Lachlan. I've been at the Loomery now for just over a year. Um, I'm in the advisory team here at the Loomery. Um, so I'm a MarTech advisor. Um, and prior to that, I've worked in a variety of digital roles um, for a few places, but mainly in the sports industry. So I came from Cricket Australia before I joined the Loomery. Um, and yeah, I've been working in and around the MarTech space for probably about three or four years now. So you have been here for a year, Lockie. You came from Cricket Australia. What brought you here? What made you make the move? So I first came into contact with the Loomery when they came in to do a project with Cricket Australia when I was on the client side um, mm. and got to basically, it was very fortunate to sort of be in the position to help, I guess, um, lead that project from Cricket side um, in, um, in conjunction with a couple of other um, people and consultants, which we brought in. But basically we needed help with our customer data um, when we were there. Data was becoming an increasingly important um, asset for us to start making better use of and driving value out of. And we had a few agencies come in and tackle it from a few different angles. Um, and then the Loomery came in and, yeah, really impressed and blew away um, all of us at Cricket um, when it first started. And, yeah, I was fortunate then to sort of work with them for about 12 to 18 months with Ben and um, Dave um, and another guy who was uh, in the in the role at the time and um, yeah and just loved it loved the experience of working with them um, felt like we got to a really good outcome um, and did some great work together. So what were your early impressions what made you go wow the Loomery is different or we want them to do this piece of work what really when you say that they blew you guys away you guys and gals away at cricket um, what was it? I think there was a couple of things. So there was on the technical, on sort of the approach side of things and the more technical side of things, it was the way that they, it was the systems, um, it was the systems thinking approach to data and MarTech that really differentiated them from everyone else we'd spoken to at that point and how we'd been looking at it internally. Um, and it's something I've really come to appreciate since working at the Loomery as well is just how complex of a space it is and how everything is connected to something else. And that's why there are no um, easy, easy solutions. A lot of the time in this space, we're talking about technology, um, data, um, but most importantly, I think the thing that they really preached, which really resonated with, um, with cricket was people and process and how important that was to solving and, you know, really trying to, to solve the problem, which we were trying to solve, which was how do we get start to drive more value out of our customer data and build better experiences um, for our customers. And yeah, that approach was something that we hadn't really heard before. Um, or if we had, it was pay, it was more lip service. So yeah. that was the first thing. And then the second thing in terms of um, just the way they operated, the, yeah, the, how, how good they were at bringing clarity to the complex, which is something that we talk about a lot now. Um, yeah. But yeah, that ability to really just take this very messy, very complex space and just simplify it um, and help us break down what is a, you know, felt like this massive piece of work into manageable decisions and, and discrete pieces of work. That was, yeah, that was what really impressed us. That's awesome. And that is our, that is us, right? To clarify the complex. Hey, who did you meet first from the library? Do you remember? Uh, would have been so Ben, who's now my manager, uh, Ben DeSaley. He was part of that team. David Greenberg as well, the head of marketing technology. He was in that uh, initial group. Had a couple of delivery managers as well. Um, Georgie, who doesn't work with us anymore, but and mm. I think Bea, who also was on that project. So there was a couple. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, Lockie, uh, what's it like now that you're on our side? What you've been here for a year now. What's what are you seeing now that is different or as expected or even better than you thought it was going to be? I think the main thing, I was really keen to jump over to the consulting side. Um, I was ready for that stage of my career. I've been working on the client side. And the best thing about working on the client side is you get to see projects through to fruition. You get to really stick with the project and really mm. drive it from the beginning right through to hopefully some, um, some resolutions. But what I was, I think, particularly in the customer data world, these, when we're talking about things like digital transformation, you're talking about multi-year 
um, projects. They're not something you just sort of knock over in one or two months. Yeah. Um, and it's also highly dependent on just where organizations and because of the level of buy-in that's needed, sometimes things on, uh, if, you're, if you're within an organization, sometimes these things don't move super quickly. So to come to an agency where, or a consultancy, I should say, where you're able to see the same challenges through different lens and in slightly different contexts, Mm. Um, and dive in where you can provide value. And if there's, if it's not ready for you to provide value, you go somewhere else. And then when they're ready again, you come back. Mm. Um, and that was probably the, yeah, that was the major thing for me that I really wanted out of the Luma. And it's been, it's been great to, I just get to help try and solve problems all day, which is what I love mm. doing. Hey, how would you describe the Lumery in, I'm going to ask you a different question soon, but just for now, how would you describe the Lumery in even just a few words or a couple of phrases? Like what are the main words that come to mind? I think the, I think the, main, the main thing that comes to mind for me is high performing, like just how, how good everyone here is at what they do. Um, that's a pretty awesome thing to come into an organisation and there's like, there are no passengers here. Like there is just, and and that doesn't mean that we are some cutthroat, um, you know, like we we have no time for fun or anything like that, but it's just, yeah, I'm just frequently just in awe of um, the knowledge of, you know, the colleagues in my team. We've got people that have been doing this since MarTech was, you know, a thing. Um, yeah. Like, and, you know, working on this space, yeah, really as it started emerging, which is which is just awesome, particularly when you're in this, you know, now MarTech is becoming such a, a an important, and critical piece for companies and to have people be around people that have been doing this for such a long time and have watched it evolve and can go a level beyond just repeating specs of different you know platforms and technology but to really like provide an opinion and provide that um that level of authority is is pretty awesome so it's just a it's just a really high performing organization so I love that phrase high performing lucky and we started to have a conversation about this before in terms of like what does that that really mean you know like there's a hundred models of high performance there's a whole lot of different ways you can look at it um something we talk about a lot at the Lumery is like our absolute obsession with being the benchmark so for me as a psychologist it would be me being obsessed with how I can bring my skills and knowledge to the Lumery and our team and you know being the best of the best in terms of evidence-based initiatives etc and you know your version of like being obsessed with the being the benchmark looks a bit different but we're all kind of focusing on on that and like you say in a way that's not like um like it's still really collaborative and, and inclusive you know so you know one of our values is is being better together so when you think of like high performing what is that what what differentiates a high performance individual a high performing person compared to one that's not i mean i'm sure mel you would have a better definition of this than me but to me it's <laughs> it's really about and i think like i can almost probably give examples of where i see it but there are just no egos here like everyone's just obsessed with getting to the right answer and really like yeah just find like solving a problem getting to the right answer how can we create value um for the client how do we think about this as a group and that means you have people that People like me that are you know a bit newer to this space come from more of the business side and you know understanding the challenge that the business is trying to solve um mm. but having some really robust discussions then with you know some of our guys with really deep technical knowledge and understanding around what's the best way to position this like we've all got expertise in different areas mm. um and we have those discussions and conversations and they're really like you know sometimes they're even quite robust but it's in a really positive way like we challenge each other in the best ways. We push each other to be better. The standards here are really high for what we want to deliver for the client. Um, there's no phoning it in. And I think that to me is kind of just, you know, when we've got people that are sitting on Slack late at, like, you know, at 6, 7 p.m. talking about, you know, like just sharing our views on the space and what we think of this particular technology and everything. It sounds a bit nerdy, but it's just like, people are there and no one has to be there doing it either. It's just, we're, we're that into it. And we're really, you know, we're really eager to learn from each other. Um, and I think, yeah, that to me is kind of like, again, no one's having to be pushed. We're all pushing each other. And um, yeah, it's just an infectious um, environment to work in really. So how do you reckon? Cause I think we do do this well. I, I reckon we do this well. How do you reckon we manage to still be like that, but not be like, intimidating or you know like I I feel like and I would hope that people would tell me if they don't feel like this but 
when people join us, they don't feel out of their depth or like they're not going to say, how do you reckon we manage to do that at the Limerie? Oh, that's a good question as well. I think a lot of it comes back to the leadership. Um, so the whether that's the founders or senior members of the Lumery, um, you'll hear, I don't know, a lot um, right from the top. And that I think is very powerful um, to hear people because, again, we're talking about such a complex space and there is so many, I think there's, you know, we like to reference the MarTech super graphic, which has got something like, <laughs> 10,000 vendors on there um, and growing and growing exactly and we're dealing with really complex topics like you know business transformation digital transformation these are things that nobody knows everything there is to know about it and hearing yeah hearing frequently and often from really senior members of the organization ask questions and yeah. say things like I don't know um, but I'll find out or something like that I think that's really what yeah creates that environment and that trust that it's okay for you to say I don't know as well. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a great observation. And you're right. We see that all the time. It's really good. I should point yeah. out for people watching as well that um, the people who work here also do know a lot, um, but there are <laughs> there are some things, there are limits to all our knowledge and we're not afraid to admit that. Well, this is one of the key... <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks for that disclaimer, Logan. <laughs> uh, but that's one of the key things of psych safety, right? It's like being... because it's an absolute fallacy that you do know everything. So one of the key elements of, of psychological safety is being able to be honest about what everyone knows is true anyway, that we don't know everything. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, you're right. It's got to filter down from, you know, the leadership up top. Um, hey, if the Lumery were a movie, Lockie, what would it be? It's a good thing you gave me a heads up for this one. <laughs> that would have put me right on the spot. Uh, I think, so I've had to think about it. I reckon the Lumery, and I haven't watched, I'm not a massive movie buff, um, so I'm sure there's a better answer than this, but to me, the Lumery, if it was a movie, would be like Ocean's Eleven, I reckon, or any of the Ocean's movies, because it's like... Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> you watched Phil's episode of Under the Hood, Lockie? No. Did he that was his it? exact answer. So <sighs> tell me your take. Tell me um, your take. Are we going to have to reshoot this? And I love this. For anyone who's watching, Phil is one of Lockie's uh, colleagues, also in the advisory team. This is just this is just a beautiful synergy for me right now, Lockie. You tell me I mean, why. This, <laughs> I love it. This, this actually makes a lot of sense because I also copy all of Phil's work. That's um, <laughs> our client stuff as well because he's so brilliant. Um, but... No. Okay. So for me, Ocean's Eleven, it's because you've got, again, it's like that high performance thing. You've got these mix of all these people that are just like so good at what they do. And the skills are all so different. Like I can't remember his name, but there's the acrobat guy, little like Chinese acrobat guy who has to get into the vault. And then there's the, um, you know, the, the guys who have to get into like get the swipe cards and get into the casino. And then there's the people who are like setting it up and there's the technical guy. And there's just all these people with all these, very varied skills and, and they all totally have this, diverse totally diverse yep. but they all have this like mutual respect and admiration for each other they have fun while they're doing it um i think they isn't make that like a heist movie isn't there like crime yeah, so they all walk away with about 15 million dollars which is i'm pretty sure what happens here as well um <laughs> if you come at all levels I for think everyone that's what I was. Um, that's what I understood was when I signed up. Was, uh, was the case. but uh, I think it's just that very. It's that varied experience and just like yeah, but how they all seem to you know have a good time working together. And they almost work together as much to you know work with these other people as for what whatever the the job is. That's awesome. So now you and Phil can sit and review your answers and see who. <laughs> I can't. Know. I can't believe that. I can't believe that either. I love that. That's amazing. All right, Lucky, any um, last thoughts or reflections you want to share putting yourself in the shoes of someone who might be thinking about whether to, to join us at the Lumerie? Any last thoughts? I think um, what I just really encourage people and what I'd love, love people to know about this place is that I think for a long time about work, I always kind of thought that it was you know, and you kind of, I think this is fairly common is people sort of think you've always got to make trade-offs with what you want. You know, you can either um, you know, work somewhere where the money's good, but the culture sucks or the work's interesting, but the, um, you know, the hours are bad or something like that. And mm -hmm. um, that's certainly not to say that the Lumer is, is perfect on every front, but as far as I've ever seen and, you know, like anywhere I've ever worked before, I think that balance of 
the work we do is so interesting. The people we get to work with is so great. Like if you just, um, you know, the perks and the culture that um, is around the Lumery as well is also excellent. All those things that you would just, you would hope for um, are, are certainly there. But yeah, I think if you're just looking for somewhere to come and sort of really take your career to the next level, it's like, it's a bit of a trope, but to, you know, a year in the Lumery is worth, you know, two or three um, anywhere else in this space, I think just to be around sure. this many experts and this many people that are so good at what they do. Um, so I would strongly encourage anyone who's, yeah, wants to take their career to the next level um, and meet some really great people while they're doing it to um, to apply. Love it. Love it. Thank you, Lockie. I know we could talk and do talk a lot. So let's wrap up and thank you for your time. And thanks, everyone, for watching this latest episode of Under the Hood. Thanks, everyone. Have a wave on the way out too. Bye. <laughs>